All right, the box toppers are out, and we know what they mean. It's time for some wild conjecture as to what I think is going to be in the set. If you don't want spoilers, don't look at the top row. Anyway, so what do we see from this that will help us figure out what Wizards is trying to do? Well, let's start off first with Cavernous Souls. I guess it's not here. It's on page two. <clears throat> Cavernous Souls means that there's going to be probably at least two tribal um, draft archetypes. And when you look at the rest of the options here, <clears throat> as to what those tribal options can be. Elves is technically an option, but I think the first one that stands out to me is humans at green-white. So we have Eternal Witness. We have Noble Hierarch, we have Cavern of Souls, and Wizards does like green-white humans. Also, we'll get into a bit of a reason why later. They're also pushing a green-white archetype by reprinting Stirring Wildwood. <clears throat> so you know green-white is going to be a color combination, and that color combination could very easily be humans. And we'll talk about Kitchen Finks in a second as well, getting into this deck. So Avacyn's Pilgrim, if you're pushing a green-white strategy in a master set, is just a very nice card to reprint. Uh, I think they're going to reprint it at common. I think that's a shoe-in for sure. It's just nice and clean. It helps you fix. It helps you ram. Um, it does everything that green really wants to do in a master set, and because of that, that adds another human to the pool if that is the case. Um, it's been a very, very long time since we've seen the card Travel Preparations, as in it has not been reprinted in a set ever, and that's because it's too good for a standard set. Um, this was too good at Common as well. It is a multicolor payoff card for a green-white deck, and I expect it to be reprinted in Ultimate Masters with an upshift in rarity to Uncommon. Um, multicolor payoff cards have generally been a principle of wizard like wizards has a principle of making multicolor payoff cards uncommon these days and this sort of card is a bit too powerful at common so they're going to make travel preparations uncommon avacyn's pilgrim a common in ultimate masters and that'll be a big push for the green white strategy as well as other strategies mana leak um i anticipate with cavern of souls in the set you're going to want to try to at least pretend like it could be viable and limited. Mana League has been in a lot of Master Sets before, and I think it will be reprinted in this Master Set. It's just a nice sort of early game interactive spell for blue decks. It's not broken, it's not too good for Masters, and it's a card that... Wow, it's only been reprinted in one Master Set so far? Yeah, we're definitely going to see Mana League at Common coming up in the Ultimate Master Set. Next up, um, we have been spoiled all of the expensive Eldrazi. I think that's a back to go see it. Emrakul, Ulamog, and Kozilek, as well as Karn, which implies, again, that Avacyn's Pilgrim is going to be in the set because ramping for Karn is a pretty big deal to helping him be at, you know, at his max. So Kozilek's Predator is a card that did see um, a reprint in Modern Masters 2015 at Common. It's been quite a while since we saw it again, and with the return of the legendary Eldrazi to the field, I think we can expect some sort of Eldrazi theme. It's not guaranteed, but it's really weird to print these without printing some sort of like Eldrazi um, synergy in the set, or just, you know, Eldrazi creature types in the set without these is a little weird. So I think Kozlex Predator is a very fair card for a master set, and it's still very powerful and it plays well, and it's just a very clean card to reprint, so I think we can expect this and his little brother of Nest Invader in Ultimate Masters. Nest Invader, again, being a very nice two-drop for any green deck, but helping you ramp, helping you get colorless symbols with that, um, token is just it's a really nice two drop and it's really nice to have in a master set so I would not be at all surprised to see both of those come back 
All right, cultivate. Where do we get cultivate from? Well, first off, cultivate is ramp, which everybody knows. Second off, through the breach is typically not very supported in pure red cards, which means that um, in order for them to try and make through the breach, a limited card, not just a constructed open, is you're going to kind of want to give availability options to splash through the breach. Um, looks like green black is really reanimation, so potentially getting a splash in. Also, cultivates just a really nice card. It might be Kodama's Reach, but I don't think that's like the, bit, the difference between cultivate and Kodama's Reach is basically negligent. And yeah, I mean, there's not too much else to say. Cultivate is just a card that Wizards has shown to like. It hasn't been reprinted in a little while. It's uh, Masters 25. So it wasn't too long, but it's just a pretty clean this card for uh, if they want to set up a three color combination of some sort, like green, black, red, or green, black, blue. Cultivate will help enable that at common. Uh, blood gas. This is one I'm fairly sure of. Uh, blood gas is still, I believe, at around 20 bucks. If you take a look, we have Life from the Loam, we have Eternal Witness, we have Vengevine. We have a lot of things that make us actually want to believe that there is a green, black, um, green and tomb, uh, which can put blood gas in the yard, which is really good. Uh, Gorio's Vengeance reanimates. All these indicate that there's going to be a graveyard strategy in green, black, and blood gas is just a nice clean hit that they can reprint in this new master set to help drive value as well as um, be a little bit synergistic with what's going on around it. Now we see uh, fairies, Bitter Blossom. Bitter Blossom and Cavern of Souls lead me to believe that they're probably going to do fairies again. The problem with doing fairies again, also creeping tar pit, indicates that they want a blue-black deck in the format. The problem with doing fairies again is there's a very limited pool of fairies. Actually, I looked them all up. So if we get fairies again, it's going to be a lot of reprints from other master sets with fairies. Um, but people enjoy fairies and they like playing the deck. It'll be very familiar to people who have played previous master sets. And while it's not guaranteed that we get a fairies deck, Sword of Temptation, I believe, is still a bit unbelievably pricey. <clears throat> it's only been reprinted in Battle Bond. And it, that might have driven its price down more than I can remember, but it's still a really powerful limited card that has some constructed viability technically and actually is worth some amount of money. So those three things together is a nice way to say Sower of Temptation gets its fair shot. Um, Vendillion Click might be in the set. I mean, but the real question is why didn't make, they make Vendillion Click a box topper? And that makes me believe that they're actually not going to reprint Vendillion Click. It also makes me doubt a little bit that we're actually going to see a dedicated fairies sub-theme because Vendillion Click is a really nice mythic, but they might have ran out of mythics, um, giving us temporal manipulation uh, instead of Vendillion Click if they do that. Anyway, I think Sower is more likely than Vendillion Click, but both of them are possible, and it might not be both. It might be one or the other but I put my money on Sower. Next up, the Titan Cycle. Why do I think the Titan Cycle is going to be in this set? Well, Primeval Titan is a good reprint. Uh, huge questions around why it wouldn't be in a box stopper, but perhaps they're not sure with the state of modern whether Primeval Titan is going to be around forever in modern, and that would be a pretty big tank if they chose to ban it at some point in the future. Um, also, putting just Primeval Titan in the box toppers, while it makes sense for constructed players, isn't totally necessary, I guess. Um, but besides Primeval Titan needing a reprint and just being a good constructed reprint, what else is there? Well, reanimate and, you know, reanimate effects in Tomb as well are really, really good with Grave Titan. Grave Titan is a massively powerful limited card, and it plays well with some of these box toppers that we see. Um, Inferno Titan, 
Sun Titan and Frost Titan I don't think are guaranteed, but we've seen in the past cycles of like the legendary Kamigawa dragons. Um, what else? We've seen cycles of like iconic older mythics before, and I think the Titan cycle is due. Let me make sure. Yeah, we haven't seen the Titan cycle been reprinted in a master set altogether. And yeah, I think that's that's gonna happen this time. It's gonna help drive some value with Primeval and Grave. I don't think the rest of the Titans are worth shit. Um, if we get this cycle, some type of effect like Banishing Light is kinda guaranteed at Uncommon <clears throat> or Oblivion Ring. Just because it's good removal and it's good synergy with Sun Titan, it helps make this card better and limited just by being in the set, which is really nice. So those are my predictions. Um, bit of wild conjecture about what's going to be in Ultimate Masters. The ones I'm most sure of are Bloodgast, Travel Preparations at Uncommon, and Avacyn's Pilgrim at Common. Past that, there's a lot of things that could change. I know that most people think that it's a real shot in the dark to say travel preparations are uncommon, but I think it's time. I think it's time that Wizards does it. I think they've been looking for powerful cards that they haven't done in previous Masters sets, and they're looking for good payoff uncommons, and travel preparations fits the bill. So that's my real reason why I think that's basically guaranteed at this point. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you're coming from the future and I'm apparently a wizard or I'm completely wrong, feel free to let me know. Um, and I hope you guys are excited as I am about uh, that pre-order of a box for Ultimate Masters. Guts telling me I've got to get a lily. Let's do it. Alright, bye.